This was the most stressful airport experience I've ever had in my life. All right, let's go to Spain. It should be let out soon. I got the most stylish airport outfit. We didn't realize this until before, but our bags are too big. We can't have full size carry ons, so we have to check our bags. And it is expensive. All right, tell me how you're feeling in one facial expression. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> All right, our flight is boarding. Let's go. Alrighty, we are in our seats headed to Newark, New Jersey. We should be there in about four hours. The plane is probably the biggest plane that I've ever been on, and it's packed. It's massive. There's, it's double rows. We're going there, and then we're going there. First stop, baggage claim. At this point, things got confusing, stressful, and we didn't have much time to record or explain what was happening. So, we're gonna take a minute to walk you through our experiences at the Newark airport. So first, some background. I irresponsibly lost my vaccine card over a month ago, and in doing research on how to travel to Spain from the US, it didn't seem like I needed the actual physical copy, because they have a form where you just upload a picture of it and fill out other information, and then you get a little QR code thing. It's like a square barcode that we thought, because it was the same thing we did for Puerto Rico, that that would get us into the country, but we were wrong. So yeah, when we got to Newark, we were checking into our flights to Madrid, we went to the desk, we put in all our information, found the flights, and then a flight attendant came over and she asked us, okay, you need to provide us with the QR codes, proof of vaccination, and passports. We showed her the QR codes, she was like, awesome, these work great, she asked for proof of vaccination. Rika showed her paper card, which obviously it worked fine. And then I showed her a picture and she said, oh, do you have the paper copy? And I explained the situation to her and she said that would not be enough. And then we tried to say that, okay, we have this QR code. I have a picture of my vaccination. We found on the website that it actually said that a digital or material proof could work. So we assumed photo is digital, but she disagreed. And she said, basically there's nothing we can do. I tried asking if we could get a test. She said no. So then after that, we sat down and honestly just kind of got really sad for a bit. And we honestly don't have much film from this time because we were unsure what we were gonna do. We thought we might not be able to go to Spain. We had no idea. So then Wyatt had an idea to go to the other side of the airport, far away from the lady that was rejecting us, to try to find somebody that could help us in any way and do something for us to get us on that flight and he found somebody. So then we ran across the airport, found a different lady who was willing to help, and we asked her if she could do anything. She called the people who work with COVID restrictions on flights and asked them what they could do. So then within a few minutes, she pointed us to this website that neither of us had ever heard of called gogetdoc.com where you can basically upload a picture of your vaccine card with all the dates and like batch numbers that are on there 
and then they'll confirm it for you. So you actually get like a certificate. So then Wyatt did that really quickly, got accepted, and it seemed like our luck was changing until we checked in. So the computer wouldn't let us check in because we were two minutes past an hour before our flight. And so we had to run to the information desk and see what they could do. So then the man was being very helpful and he asked for all of our information and I showed him the vaccine, go get doc, and it worked. Like he printed off our boarding passes and sent us running. So then we ran to security, a lot of people let us through and were being really nice. And then I had to go through security three times. And by that time, I had already been through for a while, so I packed up all our stuff, was waiting, ready to go, and I actually put Rika's shoes in the bag. So then I ran through the airport to our terminal, barefoot. <laughs> and for a while, we actually couldn't find our gate, and then we made it. All right, so the rest of the episode should go on as usual. I cannot believe it. After all that struggle, I got a digital COVID certificate and they let us through, got us boarding passes. We are at the gate. We made it. You were out of breath there, huh? And thank you to all the kind people who let us through. Oh my word, yeah, people are so helpful. It's so important to be kind to these workers because they just deal with angry, angry people all the time. This is the most stressful airport experience I've ever had in my life. I think we became the show of everyone's day at the airport with me running with no shoes on. That is travel ready right there. That's what we are. So we are all settled in and they even gave us a free pillow and blanket. This flight is supposed to be seven hours long. I think we're gonna try to sleep. We see food. So excited to eat. Wonderful. What is that you have here? Complimentary wine. Yes. <laughs> After a very long day, I think this sounds very nice. Is that good? I can get used to this. This ice cream is so good. Good morning. So close. Third country together. Alright, first step getting off the plane, second step customs. Okay, we made it through customs. Now we gotta get onto our connecting flight. Now we gotta rush. All right, this is a super big airport, so to get to our connecting flight, we have to take a bus to the next terminal four. So here we go. That's where we are. That's where we're going. This airport must be huge, because we're going on the freeway just to get to another terminal. The second time we're running in the airport today. Shoes aren't even tied. We are sprinting through the airport. The flight leaves in 30 minutes. They stop boarding eventually. Airport three done, second time running. We made it. On our way to Sevilla, here we go. How is everything working out? There you go. <laughs> Hello. Something happened where right after we got in line, the bus line just got huge. Gracias. All right, we made it to downtown Sevilla. We're at the bus station. We're gonna check in, get tickets for our bus to Ubrique. The Sevilla bus station looks very nice. Uh, it's not key. It's not okay, wrong bus station. But I guess we can get to the other bus station from a bus from this station. They said we want the C4 C4 bus. Sevilla. We made it. We made it to the bus. C4. Did you get our 
our backs. And we're pretty sure that this right here is the bus station. All right, we gotta buy tickets to Ubrique and the bus tickets are sold here in Damas. Um, can I also comprar dos billetes for Ubrique? Leaves at 6.45. Only 20 euros to get there for both of us total. Gracias. Muy bien. All right, we have two tickets and we have three hours till we're supposed to be here. Here is our little poster that comes with the three course deal. All right, so after a little pit stop, we're gonna go wait for the bus. It's it? Oh, it says Ubrique. So the bus takes about two hours and 15 minutes to get to Ubrique and that means that we'll get there at around 9.15, 9 o'clock at night. Wild journey, guys. Wyatt and Rika signing off. Peace. There's a normal water fountain, and then there's the python. Do I look like a snake? Do you want it with egg? See. Si. Do you want it with bacon? See. Si. Apparently, I've been saying first things first before <laughs> everything, even when it's like the tenth thing we do. <laughs> Does anyone know why airplane toilets are so loud? So yeah, when we got to New York, New York, 